What's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm going to be going over something I haven't really done yet before, and that's showing you guys all the isopods that I own, so stick around. So before we get started, I just want to let you guys know something. I actually don't work with a large amount of isopods in my collection. I got really, really addicted to them about a year and a half ago, and they, they just, they, I bought all the ones I thought were really cool, all the ones I wanted to keep, and then what I decided is about last March of 2022 is that I don't necessarily need to get more. If I want to obtain more, I can get those by trades. So I got all my favorite isopods that I wanted, and obviously there's some that I still really want to get that I might not be able to get, but I ultimately decided that I don't need to buy any more. I'll just work with what I got and make some trades and get some more. So that's definitely helped out a lot with expanding my isopod collection. But I don't work with a large, vast amount of them. Um, with anything I've done in terms of selling and breeding and all that, I've probably made the most money out of selling isopods. And I've done that with probably the cheapest isopod that I own. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start off with the isopods that a lot of people use for bioactive enclosures, but they're a bit larger and more protein hungry, and that is Procellio lavis dairy cow. They're a very popular and very common species of isopods. You can find them just about anywhere. If you guys are in the Chattanooga area, I also sell these as well. So we're going on to their brothers, which is the Procellio lavis orange. Basically, exact same species, just a different color morph, and no, they cannot interbreed, fun fact. So you cannot put them together and they'll breed but I do mix them together in some of my bioactive enclosures because they don't do anything to the trailers but yeah this is just the orange version of the dairy cow next we got one of my favorite small species of isopods and that is Cubaris marina papaya and these guys are just thriving I have so so many of them and I just love their light peachy pinkish color very very cool species to work with and I absolutely love them Moving on to our Armadillidium, we have another fan favorite, I would suppose, a person favorite, as well as one of my favorites, and that is Armadillidium maculatum zebra. So, obviously, these are just the zebra isopods. They look just like zebras. They got these cool black and white stripes. Obviously, some of them can vary. Like, you got this really high white one, which I think is awesome. They also have yellow zebras, which will have, a, instead of white, they'll have yellowish, and chocolate zebras as well, which will have brown. After that, we have our Armadillidium wernere orange. I have had very little success with these guys until recently. Um, I bought them only a 10-pack of them and I could not get them to do anything and I've had it for over a year and just recently the last couple of months they finally started breeding and we're starting to get a, a heavier number of them but I absolutely love these guys these are easily one of the coolest looking isopods you could ever see see look just look at the coloration the white dots and they're a good size too which I absolutely love about them moving on to my next few we have our Cubaris panda kings so obviously just like what they sound like these guys just look like little panda bears and it's just so cool how something that you as played with the kid where you only saw these gray little bugs that roll up in the bar have so many different variations and colors and shapes and all that it, they're truly one of the coolest animals I have ever seen after that we are have our Nisadio species purple ghost so these guys are pretty up there in price I would say compared to some of my other ones um, I got these out of a trade and they immediately just exploded so I have a ton and ton of these guys next we have the Cubaris I'm not gonna pronounce it right but it's Eerie Mitonensis these are probably top three favorite for me so they're these grayish little isopods but they kind of had you can see this reddish skirt if you look right there and I think that looks so cool um, these guys took a little bit longer for me to build up a good group of them, but now they are doing excellent, which is great. Moving along, we have probably the most expensive isopod in my collection, and that is the Cubaris species Cappuccino. These guys were notoriously slow to get booming. Um, I got them, these are probably part of the last group of isopods I ever bought, but now I got a full, big, healthy group of them. These guys are very expensive on anywhere you buy them from. I tend to price my isopods much lower than most other people. I see people sell five of these for like 300 bucks. I sell I sell all my isopods in 10 packs. And for these guys, I think I do two to 250. I can't remember for sure, I'll have to check my pricing, but very, very cool species. Um, and if you want it for cheap, you can just hit me up and I'll get you some. Moving on to one of the best small species of isopods, you have our Armadillidium 
Espanoli Marbleys, or Marblies. I don't know how to pronounce it, but these guys are super, super tiny, but they have such cool little colors and shapes with them. Um, and almost look kind of like rigid. It looks like a saw a little bit, but absolutely love these guys. Moving on to another more expensive species I own. This is Cubaris species Saba. Um, I got a ton of these guys. They just have this very, very cool, like kind of dirt look to them. Um, not too many people know about these as you would expect, but it might be just because of their coloration looks just like dirt, but I don't know. But they're, they're pretty expensive um, out in the world. But again, I sell my prices much lower than other people. On to our next one, we got our Porcelio Saber Lemonade. And this is just a big mixed group of different colors of the same species. So there's no defined morph of this. It's just literally a whole bunch of them. But I kind of like it because it mixes it up, gives a little bit of variation if you want to buy a set of isopods or whatever. Next, we got our Armadillidium vulgari. These are the American Magic Potions. Um, I'm trying to remember if these guys are smaller or larger than the Japanese versions. I don't quite remember, but you know, they're a cool little ice pod. They got some like blotches of yellow along alongside their white. So pretty cool guys. I'm not too, too ecstatic about them as some of my other ones, but I like them. I like all of them. So, all right, next up we have our Nisadio species Shiro Ut series. I got these out of a trade as well, and they are doing absolutely magnificent. I got a ton of them. We can see two of them actually mating right there. There's a dead one right there. I'm not sure what happened there. I don't necessarily take out any dead ones or anything like that. Um, you know, they, they're still animals and everything, but you know, I kind of just let them do their own thing. Following that, we have uh, one that I recently got, and I don't have too many of them, but it is the Armadillidium klugai, and these are the clown isopods. These guys are pretty big, and I love their coloration. Honestly, I I don't give these guys enough credit as I probably should, because I, these are probably one of the coolest looking isopods that they have out there on the market. Um, I do hope to get some, there's different morphs of the clown isopods, so I probably would like to get some more in the future, depending how I can obtain them. Now we're going to move on to probably my favorite isopod, and that is the Armadillidium Gestroy. And these guys are super, super cool. Just big isopods with a nice shaded, darkish, almost purplish, grayish on them. And then they have these blotches of yellow. It almost looks like a millipede. If you've ever seen those millipedes out, outside in the wild that have the... Uh, uh, it's hard. I can't remember, but they produce cyanide. Fun fact. I don't know if it's a type of mimicry. I don't know where these guys come from, but these guys are probably easily my favorite ice pot. I love the, just the difference in coloration. You got those white, that bright, bright yellow against all that, um, against all the grayish around the back tone. It's super cool to me. All right, next we got Armadillidium nasatum whiteout. So these are just a kind of just a little white isopod, nothing too special. I don't remember even how I got these. I think I got them for free. Um, don't really do much with these guys. Don't really sell them or anything. But you know they're they're cool. They're just a little white isopod. After that, we got probably what everyone would call the holy grail of the isopod industry, and that is the one that everybody wants because of their unique look. And that is the Cubaris Rubber Ducky. And these guys live up to their name. If you look, they all look like these little, little ducks, which is so, so cool. Um, now, I made a video about these guys, and obviously prices and things have changed um, since making videos, but a lot of people sell these for so much money, like five for like 200 plus dollars. These are in no way a rare species of isopods. They take a while to breed and they don't have large amounts of offspring in their brood. I think they have up to like six, but they're not hard to take care of. They're, they're very simple. They do like a little bit more humid. I have a ton of them and I sell like 12 of these for $150, I think, which I think is very reasonable. Um, obviously, I've changed my price a little bit too, but still, I don't charge in any way a large amount for these guys just because... Even though they're super cool, I think everyone deserves a chance to have them. So you guys can get these pretty cheap from me as well. Just hit me up and I can get you some of these as well. But yeah, this is the holy grail basically. This is the, this is the species that everybody who's just getting in really wants to get. Uh, and it, it makes sense why. Just look at how cool they look. Last but not least, we have the ones that have probably made me the most amount of money, and that is just, I can't pronounce it, but Porcelionitis perinusis, and these are just the powder oranges. These guys are awesome. Look at how many I got here. 
So we got different colorations. Um, they all started from the same culture. I kind of mixed up other cultures that I got from people just to get some more genetic variation within their uh, culture. But these guys, I sell, I sell them for the cheapest out of all my isopods and I sell them most of these. And that's because these guys are great for bioactive enclosures. Um, if you have certain animals that like to eat the isopods, they can work as that too. I also do that with my Presidio Lavis oranges and dairy cows, but they are a little bit bigger and make it more like a cricket size, I guess, in a way, so that people are more attracted, uh, or reptiles are more attracted to eating them. But these guys, I, I sell so many of them, and they're easy to start. They, they can survive just about anywhere. So these guys really do great. And that's all I got for you for this video, guys. Those are all the isopod species that I work with. I can fit them all on this little shelf. Maybe down the line, depending on what I decide to do, maybe I might get some more. Maybe I might sell off entire cultures. I'm not entirely sure, but I like what I got right now. I do kind of want to get a couple of more, so we'll see where it takes me. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys could please subscribe, I would absolutely love that. And follow my social media. I'll link that down below, and we will see you next week.